Story 1. A little backstory. My grandfather, we will call him for example, is a terrible person, a complete narcissist, and an entitled jerk. To put it into perspective, the first time he met my grandmother, she was on a date with another man, and for example barreled in, basically kicked the man out, and continued on as if he was the one she was there to see. I have heard numerous horror stories about how he would beat my grandmother, mother, and uncle. He would cut people out of his life for the pettiest reasons, including his own children, and is, all around, a terrible person. So, on to the story. My sister got married a couple of years ago pre-COVID. The ceremony was at her and my mother's church, started at four, and lasted an hour. The reception was held at a hotel on the other side of town, so my sister decided to have it start at six. This is important, so keep that in mind. Everyone made it to the reception just fine, and things were going well. My sister and her husband showed up right on time and started going table to table, speaking with guests, as is customary. This is when, for example, started acting up. Here is our cast going forward. My family was seated right in front of the wedding party, which I was at. I heard my grandfather start talking and tuned in on the conversation. For example, dinner was supposed to be served at 6. It's now 6.15, side note. It was never stated anywhere that dinner was at 6, just that the reception started at that time. Mom, the bride and groom are still talking to their guests. Once they are done, food will be served. For example, I don't care. I was told dinner was at 6, so where's my food? Aunt, can't you wait for five more minutes? The bride and groom only have a couple more tables to go. Then we can eat. Mom, and can you keep your voice down? This is the bride's big day, and we don't need you making a scene. For example, apparently not appreciating that last comment, says, Don't you tell me what to do. You may be a grown woman, but I will not hesitate to beat you. At this point, I could see this was going downhill fast, and I started getting up to see if I could help somehow. Before I got a chance to, I heard Aunt speak up. Aunt, if you are going to be a jerk, then just leave. We don't need your attitude today. For example, well, fine then. Yelling so loud, I saw people at the other end of the rather large dining hall turn to look. Somehow, neither my sister nor her husband seemed to notice. For example, stood up and started marching towards the exit. Mom reminded Aunt that, for example, was supposed to do the father-daughter dance with the bride our dad passed away months before this, and the bride had her heart set on having some male figure in the family do the dance. Mom and Aunt followed, for example, out of the dining hall and into the main foyer of the venue. I, thinking on my feet, immediately closed all the doors into the foyer, so no one inside could see what happened next. As I was closing the final door, I heard Mom and Aunt trying to talk, for example, into staying. For example, didn't say a word, and right as I turned around to try and help the situation, for example, balled up his fist and punched Aunt right in the face. He did this right in front of the security guard, without another word. For example, turned around and left, leaving his wife at the table and aunt leaning against the wall, rubbing her cheek. The security guard called the company he works for and asked them to send an officer to his location. Mom, please, no police. I can't let him ruin the bride's big day. I should note here, this security guard was not hired by us, but instead by the venue. Venue policy is that if the security guard sees any signs of illegal activity, including assault, he has to call the police. The police showed up, and Aunt decided not to press charges. But the police insisted they still talk to, for example, and explain the severity of the situation. While Mom and Aunt worked this out, she ended up pressing charges. I ran inside to explain to the bride that, for example, had left and offered to do the father-daughter dance in his stead. After the reception, we gave the bride the entire story and she was furious but was thankful that nobody saw any of this happen and was so supportive of getting the police involved. Story 2 Let me start with a little background. I 28M and my wife 26F married three years ago and have been together for six years. When we met, I was already in my third year of college for a special branch of a very productive industry, similar to the United States Army. You go to a different country for a few months, do some really dangerous jobs, get paid a lot, come back for a few months, and so on. In the beginning, I was going away for six, eight, or even 10 months in order to promote as fast as possible. Now I earn around four years of a medium salary in my country in just three months. It's a hard job, but I love it. 
My wife was very supportive, and I always knew that it is very hard for her to have this kind of lifestyle. I always tried to spoil her and compensate for my time spent away from her with tons of gifts and trips to exotic places. Two years ago, when I came home after an extended contract, I had to stay almost two more months because all flights and borders got shut down during COVID, but got a 20% extra salary during this time. She told me she couldn't take it anymore. She was going crazy alone at home and had nothing to do. She lost her job during COVID and did not want to work again after that, which I fully support her because I wanted her to be happy and money was not a problem. I was petrified, and at first, I believe she wanted to break up. Then she continued with, I love you so much, and I want you to give me a baby so I can take care of him and have a little bit of you when you are gone on contract. So we did get pregnant. I was the happiest man alive. Everything changed. I was a man now. I was a father. I was on top of the world. I was going with her to every doctor appointment. And during my time away, I was asking for echo sounds. The birth had no complications, and everything went amazing. One month later, I went on another contract to make some money that should cover every need for our little baby. Halfway during this contract, I received a text from my wife that shattered my life. The text was short and simple, and I would never forget those four words that sent me into the deepest depression I had ever had. I want a divorce. I did not understand. I tried to call her to find out what happened, but nothing. After a few days of talking back and forth, she said, I want a divorce so I can be with the love of my life. I was already preparing my suitcase because I made a request to my company to send me back as an emergency. When I got home, she and the baby were gone. Two weeks later, I was in court to settle the divorce. During this, I found out that she had a lover for well over four years and she plans to marry him as soon as the divorce is done. Now the laws in my country are different and I know that my first priority should be a really good lawyer. My wife had a really bad one and she decided to speak by herself without the help of the lawyer most of the time. Her whole idea was, I am a woman and he is never home. Well, even if the law usually favors women in my country, Cheating is considered to be a breach of contract wedding contract, and she wanted to take full custody of our child in order for me to pay child support. I was not letting this happen. I spoke with my lawyer and an accountant, and it seems that I only had to pay child support from my base salary. My danger bonus is not included in child support because it is for my life risk and mine alone. And because the company pays fewer taxes on the danger bonuses, I have a lot of them, and my base salary is around 10% of my income. When she found out that she would take almost nothing from child support, and I gave her the option of me taking full custody of the child with a no-contact rule, and I will never ask her for child support, she agreed in a second. Basically, she agreed to get out of our lives. We even changed the birth certificate of the child to show me as the father and a blank space for the mother. She gave up any kind of claim on the baby. During the trial, her lover was asked to come as a witness, and the idiot agreed. He is a bargain version of a famous influencer known for his controversial views, an alpha man who treats women poorly, which seems to appeal to her. He has a pretty good income and owns a small company, less than half my salary, but he is always home, and it is still a lot for our country. Now, during the trial, he said they cheated behind my back for three years and that the baby is his. He said she tricked me to make her a baby so I wouldn't find out about her cheating. He said all this just to make me feel horrible, I guess, because this is actually kind of illegal. Something like alienating affection and other legal terms my lawyer explained to me, he basically said he knew they were married but decided to ruin the marriage. Now, at this point, the child situation was already done and an agreement was signed. The judge asked my wife if it was true, and she said yes, ordering a DNA test just to confirm. After the DNA test confirmed what they said, the judge said she would let me cancel the agreement and settle the situation again with my wife, now that the child is not biologically mine. I said, no, your honor, this child is mine and I want to keep him. The judge was stunned for a minute, but then said, well, if the agreement is a valid contract and since you don't want to void it, then Mr. L, you are a father and no one can take that child away from you. In my country, it doesn't matter who is the biological parent. It matters who is the parent in the documents. And since he knew he was the father from the beginning and did not come to the hospital to declare it, he automatically canceled all his paternal claims. Now the divorce is over. I got my baby and my wife is out of my life.
The first thing I did was hire three babysitters to work eight hours a day, so my child has 24 sevens care and I have time to prepare my revenge. I started two separate companies with the help of an online assistant from India. You can hire them cheaply and they do whatever you need online. This guy made two super professional companies, one in industrial credits giving money to businesses for a lower rate than banks, and the second one was a copycat of my ex's company. But this one was in the same city as his. Both were made just for one client, my ex-wife's lover. My assistant started sending tons of ads of my credit company to him. Emails, targeted Google Facebook ads, etc. I was sure that he knew if he needed money. This was the place to get a lot with low rates. Next, I made a lot of advertisements for the second company. But the company had only the machines, the rented space, and one worker, the cleaning lady. Every time someone called for the company services, they immediately got declined because we were overbooked. My ex's lover, let's call him D, was one of them. Multiple times, actually. And he went mad every time he got rejected because he saw how big the competition was. Now it was time to give him the bait. Because my company had some problems in the main country. I don't even know in which country this company was registered. They changed the management and wanted to make some fast profit. So the regional manager wanted to sell some of the equipment. When he heard this, he started calling and sending emails to buy them out. The response was something like, We are an international company. We can't sell the brand, but we can sell some equipment. It was illegal for me to sell the company without showing him the accountant's data, which was empty, but equipment I could sell just with a simple contract. He wanted the competition out of his city. He did not need the equipment. So, the manager gave him a deal. If you buy our equipment for, let's say, three times the price, we can say in the contract that we will not do business again in this city. In just two hours, I received calls and emails on my first company for credit for that equipment, etc. I knew he was out of money because he spent a lot on his future wedding with my ex-wife. I sent him a contract. Based on our evaluation, the equipment was not worth that money, so he would need to give us a guarantee his company, and he was not allowed to sell any equipment or parts of his company until he paid everything back. If he was behind in payment for six months straight, I would get all of it. Also, in the contract, I stated that the credit company would buy that equipment directly basically. I just gave myself my money. I made sure every single word of the contract was legal and was a good enough deal for him to take it. Later that same day, he sent me the signed contract. Normally, he should be able to pay for everything, even if the clients he hoped he would get from this company leaving were non-existent. He still should be able to pay if he gave me around 80% of his company income for the next five years. Fast forward a bit. On the day of their wedding, I went to give them an envelope in my country. You give money in envelopes as a wedding gift. He started to laugh at me and told me to get out because I was not invited, and he didn't need my money. I smiled and told him to open it. He looked inside and was expecting to come to court next week. He laughed and asked, What is this? I told him, See you in court. Enjoy your wedding night. Next week he came, and I was suing him for child support. As I said, in my country, if you are aware that you have a child and refuse to go to the hospital to recognize him, you are no longer the father, but you are still forced to pay child support, and it is actually at an increased rate because you tried to dodge responsibility like running from a car accident scene. He did not want to pay, so he tried to say that he wanted the child or co-custody, that he was the biological and blood parent, etc. This made me happy because I wanted to drag the trial out as much as possible to drain him of all his money. But I couldn't after the judge saw all his declarations during the divorce trial. She ended the trial really fast and forced him to pay me 40% of his and his company's income from the time the child was born until he finishes college or I get married. And guess who did not manage to pay? And guess who is the new owner of his company? Now I don't work anymore. I just run his company and spend almost all my time with my child. Update. A lot of people ask me about the child and the fact that I am not the biological father. I do not plan to hide from my child that I am not the biological father. We will talk about this when the time comes, in high school maybe, or around that age. Until then, I will try to be the best friend and paternal figure I can be. And if my child decides to go to the biological father, then I will not have any objection. Deceiving into bonding, I need this child more than you think. After all that happened, I don't want a relationship anymore, and I am very lonely. Being financially free, I have no purpose in life anymore.
and about the statistics. Yes, statistics do not lie. And I did punish paternity fraud. But I punish the idiot who did it, not the innocent child. I harass him every month if he is one day late on child support. And I have a lawyer on payday just to mess with him and scare him with another court call. I do not care about every man, etc. I take care of myself and my child, and other people are not my business.